everyone, thank you for joining us for another video. Today we're looking at the historical background around animal cruelty laws. So we may all be aware of the way that animals are treated today, but how were they treated previously? So in pre-modern societies, the laws were mostly applied to the poor, who were not members of a ruling aristocracy, and animals were referred to as possessions, with rich people typically having more pets. With the rise of modern society, animals were seen as sentient beings, and this coincided with the development of similar views regarding persons of other nations, creeds, colours and women. And this was, for example, knowing that they have feelings, such as pain as well. There was a clear conflict between possession-oriented people who had the view that women, animals, etc. were just objects or possessions, and morally oriented legal thinking, which was arguing that everyone deserves rights. So in the 18th century, there was recognition that animals, like humans, can suffer pain, and that pain entitles them to legal as well as moral rights. In 1809, animals are considered as property only. It's a direct quote from Lord Thomas Uxkine, who was chancellor, and this was the first step in the right direction which put animals into the criminal justice system and was the first law to actually protect animals. It may seem counterintuitive as it's referring to animals as a property, but it was really important there was a law actually acknowledging animals. In 1822, Martin's Act, which was an act to prevent the cruel and improper treatment of cattle, was brought about. This was to prevent the ill treatment of horses, cattle and other animals the conviction of Martin's Act resulted in a fine. The rich had most pets, but were not deterred by this fine as they had plenty of money. In 1824, Society for the Prevention of Cruelties to Animals, the SPCA, was founded to enforce animal cruelty legislation. This was a second body, so separate to the police, and this was specifically for animals. In 1835, Peace's Act was brought about by Joseph Peace, who was an MP. This is an extension of Martin's Act, but it also includes torture, and it was extended to other domestic animals, which was not covered by earlier laws due to the laws being too young. And this time would also result in imprisonment alongside a fine. In 1840, the RSPCA was founded. The RSPCA is the SPCA as founded in 1824, but the R stands for royal, and this was a royal recognition by Queen Victoria, which allowed the SPCA to be taken more seriously. In 1849, there were two times more criteria to cover any loopholes that existed in previous laws. So firstly, there no longer needed to be established that the defendant had acted cruelly. They did not need evidence of intention in order to prosecute. And second of all, liability was extended beyond those who actually committed the offence. It was also extended to supporters. In 1876, there was an amendment. It made it an offence to experiment on any living animal when calculated to give pain, unless carried out to advance physiological knowledge, saving or prolonging life or alleviating suffering. In 1900, Wild Animals in Captivity Protection Act was brought about. At this time, circuses were very popular, and animals may be whipped, harmed, or held captive, and this act ensured that they were being looked after. In 1911 to 2006, the Protection of Animals Act, which started in 1911 and later became the Animal Welfare Act in 2006, firstly, an unlimited fine not exceeding £20,000. Secondly, term of imprisonment, which in 1911 was for a maximum of six months and not exceeding 51 weeks. And this was changed to just under a year in 2006. And finally, make an order to pay cost incurred by the prosecution, including those arising from the care of and treatment to the animals which was the subject of the prosecution. And today, in present day, the UK government has introduced prison sentences up to five years for animal abusers. There have been lots of changes over the time, and it's definitely interesting to reflect back and think about how the laws have changed, and also to question what laws might change in the future. Interesting to think about. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something useful. Thanks. Bye.